So when you say a keyword, John, what define keyword? <sighs> so the question is, what is curing? Now, what is our definition of curing? We often hear that term curing referred to, we put concrete on the ground, we leave it, we walk away from it, and it's going to cure. Curing is something we do. Curing is the process of ensuring that we have adequate water for that concrete. If we look at the case of a, of a concrete cylinder for, con for, for testing purposes, that concrete cylinder is either going to be sitting in a bucket of water or it's curing. So we, we make sure that it always has excess water to make sure that we have complete hydration. Right? The other way that they, that in other places, they'll put misters in where they'll just mist the surface so they ensure that it never dries out. And so the purpose of curing is making sure that there is adequate water always present to complete the process of hydration or to complete the pozzolanic reactions that are occurring within that concrete. So on a, on a shop floor slab, basement in the house, how long would you water it down after it's it's finished? It depends on, you know, we, we had a conversation going on uh, over by the coffee pot there a little bit ago and we're talking about some of the, some of the issues that have gone on. I got, a, I got shown a picture of some concrete and, and, and if I may, I'll bring that example up, don't have to say who it was, but they showed me a picture of a piece of concrete that they had formed inside a shop and it was 8 by 16 and it's scaling. And I asked the question, I mean, what's that concrete worth? Well, it's about 1.3 cubic meters of concrete. Let's say concrete's 200 bucks a meter, so what's that stuff worth? 260 bucks? Is that what that concrete's worth? Well, they built stands for that concrete. They put the concrete on the stand. They built fancy railings around that concrete and handrails down that concrete. How much is that concrete worth? If those are made in stainless steel and they're custom built onto that, onto that stand, well, it could be two, three, four thousand dollars a meter depending on what we do with that concrete. What's that concrete worth and what environment is that concrete heading into? In the case of these porches, that concrete is outside. So it's going to be subjected to freeze-thaw attack continuously. If it ices up, I know they're going to try and get rid of that ice and how are they going to do it? Probably de-icing salts, right? So now we're into chemical attack going, going on as well. How long do you want it to last? One of the things that we see is, culturally, we see a difference in this room. There's one culture here that says, you know what, I'm going to take this concrete and make it last for the generation, next generation, the generation after that, and maybe even the generation after that, because we know that the last generation built it and it didn't last to my generation. <laughs> and I want it to last to the next, you know, two generations down the road. Because we realize that I can't afford to build it right the first time, but I can afford to do it twice, right? <laughs> well, we can only afford, <laughs> if we can't afford to do it right the first time, we can't afford to do it. Same with the building you build around. And so when we, look at, when we look at a shop floor, how long do we want that slab to last? And when we look at designs, we're going to take concrete, we've talked about concrete, we've talked about some of the factors with concrete. What we haven't talked about is the duration of concrete. When we see the durability come on like a previous slide, so increased durability, well increased durability means increased longevity. That concrete, therefore, is designed to last longer. In our North American culture, it's build a thing, get people in it, drive down the road, if they see your taillights, your responsibilities stop. So get it in quick. We build with wood. We talked about that already, right? But how long do you want it to last? When we see an engineer design for 50 years, we see a lot of properties change. You know, when we look at CSA 23.1, and it's a 50-year design, so it's a, it's a major infrastructure project, say, for the province. That could be a bridge, which could be a 75-year lifespan. That could be a power line project. Well, that's a 50-, 60-year lifespan, okay? We see hospitals. Well, those are probably 50-year lifespans. All of those designs are using CSA 23.1. But one of the, thing, the, the th only thing that we see change on those projects from an engineering standpoint is the level of quality control. They don't turn their eye to the details like they will in you know, a commercial structure. Even though the engineer knows what it's supposed to, what's supposed to happen in that structure, they turn their eye to the curing. 
They turn their eye away from maybe our reinforcing and those types of things. But when we get into those long infrastructure projects, those projects that are designed to last for 50, 75, or 100 years, it's the quality control that changes within them. And so the question is how long should we cure concrete or which concrete should we cure? I think the question is how long do you want it to last? What is your durability factor? Because we're proving here that it's essential to cure. Your durability factors are directly related to the duration of your cur curing. Okay. What water, water cement ratio should I pour it at? I'll ask the same question. How long do you want it to last? We can give you really good hard concrete that'll work well for you by pouring it at a 0.6 water cement ratio. But what's the durability factor compared to a 0.40 water cement ratio? Yes? You said earlier you submerge your cylinders in water for 56 days. Can you do the same with a pad and have the same result? When we submerge them in, what we're doing is ensuring that we're getting um, our potential strength out of those cylinders. So we're proving the potential strength. If you take a pad and submerge it in water, you're going to hit full potential strength of that concrete. So say you're doing a side expect in early June, and you'll need it. Obviously, just burn the side and fill it up with water for two months. <laughs> Get your potential. Or cover it in straw and keep that straw wet. So the goal is to keep yes. it wet or moist. The minute that surface dries out, the minute that surface dries out, hydration stops. When hydration stops, it calcium it, it carbonates off. When it carbonates off, it never builds strength again. So once that dries out, that's the strength you're going to get. We'll get into some slides later on. You know, Tom. Drying out is is, is why. You, even precasters, you know, they, they build it for 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 60 mp mix. And 24 hours later, it's white. It stops building strength. It's a 24 MPA the next day or whatever. If it dries out, it's done. 